Okay, now let's say it was Ibogaine, there was something else, you know. Now if the people that put it together, their hands wasn't clean. The place that they did it was in some jungle, I don't know what, and there is malaria over there. And there is all kind of other germs of other uh, bacteria. And you took the bacteria, the ibogaine, plus the frog the poisoning, God knows what else, okay? Yes, you had the, some feeling of ibogaine, mm -hmm. but then you could have died. This is not, Ib ibogaine is, again I repeat it, it is safer than aspirin, okay? But you gotta know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You gotta have medical, good medical checkup staff. And which we have, we have 15 doctors, specialists. Absolutely. Okay? I and we, before we check somebody, we don't start treatment. Okay? And I'm really, God bless you, that you are brave, and God bless you then, you. you are brave to come forward. So, I, we do this, okay? This, we have, this doesn't make you millionaires, okay? No. This is, our purpose is research, saving lives and teaching people not to do dumb things yeah okay more of the story is don't try it without a medical setting it Absolutely needs, it's something not. that's don't very do it and don't, very don't do dangerous and you don't, don't know what you're getting don't think that what you it says on the uh, package you receive which has a return receipt uh, address that is non-existent mm -hmm. don't don't believe everything you see and don't believe everything you read and no matter how intelligent you are because he's got a really high iq or how much mm -hmm. clinical experience you have because i have clinical experience or how much research you've done because we did research for six months none of that adds up to the intelligence and experience that you have that you could have provided even in t even look i've been studying the talmud and the, the the kabbalah for 35 years you know what my conclusion finally is i how much i don't know <laughs> okay <laughs> not how much i know how much i don't know when you reach that, then you, oh, you're just starting to learn, okay? Yeah. And you always a, a student. It's not just thing. It's like we did we do research. We have medical staff. We have nurses. We have equipment, okay? And we never had any kind of problem with anyone that to think that he's maybe in danger, okay? Never. Never reach that. Never even they say all oh, the the heart rate drops. In, in our place, the heart rate does not drop. Those researchers say that, okay, it's because you are using the, the I'm sorry to say, the dumb I, uh, you know, protocol that have been used, weighing people like a cow and just throwing them into their stomach, whatever it is, and you don't know what kind of why we can use. And this is not protocol. I have 250 different protocols. I had my heart rate monitor on during the process and checked it periodically. Danielle did. It was all over the and place. And it hit down to 60, up to 212 beats wow. per minute. But and that was after, okay, so in the beginning it stayed stable. His heart rate stayed stable, his vitals stayed stable for quite a long time, for probably about 12 to 24 hours. And then it was after the first 12 to 24 hours that things started to be off, like his blood pressure would spike or, you know, his his temperature was different, his heart rate would go up and down, um, things just seemed a lot, his respirations got really fast, his respirations were one of the things that was really bad, um, they were double, almost triple what they're supposed to be when he was at the hospital. Um, and even after he was able to come out of the comatose state, he had to logically force himself to breathe slower in order to keep his respirations at a normal rate. I mean, so, what did they say? What, did, what does he have? What they had say? no idea. They, we, I took him to a research enough. hospital, and I won't name the research hospital, but I took him to a research Very hospital. Good. They I had never heard of hospital. it. Never heard of it. But you told them that he took IV. I did. I educated them, and now, since then, they've been inquiring about um, more about it and are doing more research Okay, I understand, it. but so... I mean, he had, they had to diagnose him with something. Why does he have fever? They, they, there was no diagnosis. No diagnosis. You couldn't, they come, they couldn't come with any diagnosis. They couldn't come up no. with anything for it. No. I have the release paperwork. There. Serotonin Just syndrome. Say. They did say serotonin syndrome. Well, no, they didn't actually. They didn't say no, that. No, that was Doctor Lord. Oh, okay. Okay, it's not Different serotonin. Doctor. There's no such a, it's just a serotonin syndrome. They make names for everything: ADD, HID, body, tattoo, you know, mumbo jumbo. You know, come on, guys. You know, I, every I get here, I got at least 100, 200 
people came over here and said they're diagnosed with bipolar. I take him to our, our specialist in, in bipolar, said she's the top-notch psychiatrist that wanted in every university in the world to be a professor. And she says, he does not, he's this not bipolar. I said, you don't look at all like bipolar. And I take her to her too, so, because I'm not a doctor, right? She says, absolutely not. Out of 100 people, there was one that was born bipolar, that was diagnosed by bipolar, okay? So, you know, it's a candy. They just uh, hand out diagnosis. I'm glad you came, you say you, you're experienced. Thank God you're alive. Mm -hmm. And Daniel, thank you for coming. And I understand you have a, I don't mention what kind of disease, we can treat that. Yes. But uh, you gotta be here like four weeks, three weeks. Wow. Okay, we treated all the people for that. And if successful. But since I'm, I'm on my way to Israel and probably to Dubai and I don't know, maybe Russia, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but mm. you know, we're probably going to open up a couple of other places. And if I could have educated people, they're not just money on them, I would. But I, I, you know, I don't know how, who to show. I got two and I developed 250 protocols, it took years of research and testing and use of the best doctors, medical specialists to come up with this. Okay. And they go, they weigh you and they, okay. And I'm gonna tell you again and again and again. I have video after video. Suboxone, we can treat suboxone method on the subject. You can treat that immediately. You don't need to be on any short acting. You come, you get the formula that might have developed when you get here. After that, the next day you get treatment, and eight days later, seven, eight days later, you're great, you go home, you buy, everything is great, okay? And we have a real good medical staff. Okay, is this real place? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You think we're doing this for, for, to, for money? No. Because I, you know, I developed millions of square feet of real estate, so I can go back to my thing and make <laughs> really money, you know? I'm sitting here in in middle of Mexico. With them. I don't even speak the language, so they can treat people. That, I mean, I think that's why I was so interested in meeting you. It was my idea in the first place to try to meet you, because I have the kind of the same mentality that I don't think that people should be making money off of this. I think that this is a crime against humanity that this is not offered and available to as many people as that want it. Yeah. Um, it is a life-saving medicine. I, I was watching him die, not just from his experience, I was watching him die before that. I was watching him die from fentanyl almost daily. I mean, he was living, he was like a zombie. He was the walking dead. I mean, it's it's no joke to be there for somebody who is struggling with opiate addiction. It destroys their own life. It destroys the lives of those around them. It is an absolute, it, it's a huge impact that happens to everyone that they touch. And so if we can help just one person that is struggling in this way, that is having such a negative impact on themselves and on their family and on their community, if we can, if that one negative impact can be changed to a positive impact, then we can change so much more. We can abs affect abs so many people's ab lives. Absolutely right. It's not about money. Every single person, I mean, we have to charge because remember, we have staff, doctors, nurses, equipment, rent, you know, you know it's, a, it's, a, it's like, even it's a church, a synagogue, or a, a, any place, mosque, they have expenses. Yeah. Right? You cannot, uh, the government doesn't, doesn't support this. There's no, we're not the, the organization that uh, raises money and people get million dollars uh, salary uh, a month. But, so the, the charge is not to get rich, but I don't want to even talk about money, I hate to talk about that, okay? But the purpose is to really treat people so they go home and they don't die. I can promise you at least 2,500 people today, if they wouldn't have come here, they would have been in grave. Yeah. And they are successful, happy. They look, the people that came here looked like they're, they're dead, half dead. They look like uh, queen and, and king and queens. Beautiful and intelligent. A lot of intelligence. You are intelligent, okay? 
I wish you could have met him before. I wish you could have seen the before and after. The before and after that I have seen him go through is so amazing. I mean, I have video that I'll show you after but of, of what he looked like while he was doing fentanyl. He, he looked like a walking skeleton. And when I say a zombie, that's uh, not an exaggeration. I, 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 I have people over here. Half yeah. of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. see yeah. every day when they come over here. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Huge. It's this very, totally very has person. become extremely difficult for me to treat addicts, really. And it's it's hard. They come over here, they've been using uh, 10 years heroin, then 10 years suboxone, and this and that, and then they, they want to get in, push a button, and in, in uh, one hour, they should feel uh, like they jump out of the plane, you know. Yeah. You Everybody can. wants a quick fix. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It doesn't work. That way. I mean, you you get fixed one hundred percent, but you go through a little bit of hardship. You don't have withdrawal whatsoever. But you have a little bit of anxiety. You can sleep a little bit. You, it's nothing. I went through one year getting off because the doctors prescribed uh, oxycon for me for for I was getting migraines. So when I found that, it took me one year of hell to get rid of it. And people here, they do it in a couple of days. Big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, one year versus that. Anyway, by the way, I got rid of my my, my migraine by I get, I treat. I mean, I take ibogaine myself twice a year. One big dose and one booster every year. And my wife and all our staff, everybody that works here, to that. The doc, our, our doctors as well. It's good that they have the experience. Everybody in knows it. what it IBM really is. helps out. And I want to show you again what IBM looks like. Okay, yeah, Charles, thank you so much. You know, here this is the guy when you were on Suboxone, and now you're doing the <laughs> help us with this. Okay, and and you're taking the the cell phone, right? Yes. Okay, here's that's what's supposed to look like. You see how how sticky it is? Look, I put my finger. God's medicine. Yeah, this yes. is God's medicine. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. I just, we just finished the other part. I gave you a boost, right? Yes. I gave you a pretty, I mean, normal boost. Is it, what, how did you feel? I feel a lot different than I did from when I thought I took Ibogaine. Um, I feel very uplifted. Um, I can't stop smiling <laughs> to the point where my cheek muscles hurt from smiling. Uh, so yeah, do you think it's just the same? I don't think so. <laughs> I think yeah. that this is a little different. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely mm -hmm. different. All right, now you understand. Yeah, yeah, it feels, if you take LSD, it also feels a little bit like Ibogaine. Yeah. Okay, but Ibogaine doesn't give you fever, it doesn't give you this, this whole this garbage that you went through. Yeah. All right.